Chairman, I just want to uh, comment um, about the member for Hanua and his speech. He said that um, the government had been listening. But of course they hadn't, because he had to get his own SOP up. And of course, if you have to get your own SOP up, that means no one's listening to him at caucus. And he talks about the vegetable growers out in Pukekohe. Well, he's a wee bit like the vegetable growers in Pukekohe, sometimes very, very wet, other times dry. And I think that uh, people out there are finding it a bit hard to work out. But I've got to say that um, as an opposition, we want this bill to be as good as it can be. And we know that the whole concept that the government's embarked on doesn't go down well with Aucklanders. So I've lodged an SAP as an amendment to the government bill. This provides that every CCO, council uh, owned, um, sorry, council controlled uh, organisation, um, will need to be open to the public. And that's, that's what I'm proposing in my SOP. Because there's no discrimination from the side of the House. We don't think just three SOPs should uh, be out in the open. We think they all should. And they must hold at least two meetings a year. And what's more, under my SOP, these meetings will be held at the most critical times when accountability and interaction with the public and local boards are needed. One is at the time when the statement of corporate intent is to be signed off, and the other is when the annual general meeting of the CCOs, when directors have to report how well they've performed. Um, and of course, the shareholders, the people of Auckland, can attend and hopefully make their views well known. Now, I think that uh, if this is adopted by the government, it will give people a degree more confidence. But of course, it doesn't solve the problems that people have. Now, we've got a situation, I suppose, where the um, opposi opposition really want to try and help. But there we have, sitting on the other side of the House, the government, looking like stunned mullets. You see, well, yes, they are, <laughs> but um, they're not a very lively lot. But what we have in Auckland is something that I think is very good, something we can be proud of. We have the mayors of Auckland at the moment who are getting on with their job, getting on with their job. And I think that's very important. You know, when you have people like Bob Harvey, who's been around for some time, he's still endeavouring to make sure that the people of his area are being well served. And I imagine he doesn't think they're going to be better served when the new super city comes in. So there's Bob Harvey, John Banks, Len Brown. Now, Len Brown, the Mayor of Manukau, is getting out in the community and doing marvellous things. Callum Penrose, the Mayor of Papakura. Now, I don't think Callum's uh, council's up to much, but Callum Penrose is the sort of person who gets out and keeps an eye on his community. He's a leader of a community, and that's what's going to be lost when we have, instead of one Mayor looking after 1.4 million people, Callum's able to look after less than 50 million in his area very well. And then Mark Ball, who would be amazed to have heard the member for Hanua and what he had to say before, because it didn't bear anything like a resemblance to the real situation. And uh, then, of course, you have Mayor Andrew Williams, quite controversial, and, of course, Mayor Penny Webster, they are all trying to do their best. Now, Penny Webster, a former ACT member, has actually started to think 
Well, maybe the Labour Party's not too bad. Mr Chairman. I call the Honourable Rodney Hyde. Uh, thank you.